What's up, everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me, Reformed Bad Boy Dryden Joss. Thank you for being here. The clip you're about to watch is from my live stream. So if you want to be notified when I go live, make sure you follow me on Twitch. And if you haven't already, join my Discord. That way you always get live updates when I'm going live. Live updates for live. Yeah. Uh, and then, again, as always, big thanks to my patrons. Thank you so much for your support of this channel. And thank you for supporting my online ministry. Now, let's get into the video. But yeah, those videos were crazy. If you guys haven't seen them, let's uh, let's maybe watch some of them together. Smartphone cameras were rolling as the Saturday attack unfolded, showing a woman trashing the South Tacos stand, dumping tins full of food, and pouring out barrels of horchata and juice before. Not the horchata. Assaulting Berta Zuniga, who told us Monday her neck is. Oh shoot! She just hit her. Sore and she's afraid. Afraid and nervous to speak out. Zuniga says the woman who they've seen before near the That's crazy. Why are they doing this? I have no idea. Every video I see that has this type of behavior has one thing in common. Being black doesn't cause this. It's a culture of entitlement, violence, and disrespect that's been embraced by many blacks. Once the retail establishments have been chased away and the malls closed, where will they go for goods and services? Why did you shoot? He's just shooting fireworks at people. That's my slime! Just shot that at a cop car. <laughs> yeah, for real, it's like when businesses leave these communities. It's like people freak out. Why are businesses leaving these communities? How dare they? That's racist. Like, <laughs> I mean, how many Walgreens have closed down in San Francisco and just left? How many Walgreens have left the state because there's a California policy? I don't know if it's San Francisco or California. Don't quote me on this. But there is a policy that you can steal up to $1,000 worth of goods and not get charged. Just walk out with it. We've seen so many videos of this, of primarily uh, black people just stealing and walking out with it. So this one, we do know the cause. I want you guys to know the cause for this one. This one is verifiable. These three women have been arrested. I don't know if they'll be charged. But basically, they wanted extra sauce. And the workers, the employees, said the extra sauce cost $1.75. Is that okay? Obviously, it wasn't okay. <laughs> We're about to get to my favorite part because I have seen this video before, but watch this girl here. This is the best part. So a lot of people were commenting, like, why didn't they take the fire extinguisher and just spray these people down, spray this crowd down? I want you to notice something as well. Look at all the men 
in the background that are just watching this and videotaping it. You know, like these people, like men, are too scared to do anything and they'd rather just take a video. Like, they're smiling. They're not even angry. They're just looking for any excuse to vandalize, destroy. You know, there's so many Bible verses about workers of lawlessness. This is lawlessness. When you have no laws and you just have this total anarchy, this is what you get. So, what can we learn from this? Well, I think immediately the first thing we have to understand is the stupidest thing that we could do from seeing those videos back to back to back to back like that. The dumbest thing you could do is immediately hate black people and be racist. Number one, as Christians, we are supposed to love everyone, but we're also supposed to love in the truth. And what is the truth? What happened here, at least for black Americans? Well, I think what, a lot of what happened is they were told a lie and they were incentivized to sin and do things that aren't morally right they were incentivized to do things that aren't healthy. Because I believe it was back in the 50s, in early 60s, they had the best marriages, like percentage-wise. They had the least amount of divorces. Marriages were strong. They had fathers in the home. They had two-parent households. Now, black people growing up in the States, I believe 66% of black children live in a single-parent household. 66%. Compare that to white people, only 24% of white kids grew up in a single parent household. Fatherlessness has run rampant in the black community because it was incentivized by the welfare state. I believe this is back in the 60s. But back in the 60s, I believe when the welfare state was created, they incentivized women being provided for through the government instead of through a working husband. So women would get paid more by the state for being a single mother rather than being a married woman. So we have a lock we have a lack of fathers. We have this lie being told to black people all the time that they deserve reparations, that they are the most disprivileged people on earth, which is a lie. Black Americans are the most privileged people on earth, just like white Americans and Asian Americans and Latino Americans. Every American is the most privileged person on earth because america is the most privileged nation on earth the freedoms we have the, the first of all the fact that we have the first amendment where we get to say whatever we want that's not legal in other countries in canada even if you say something wrong if you misgender someone you could go to prison you don't have freedom of speech in canada you don't have freedom of speech in other countries that is a freedom that we have here in the states and it's special to us so black people have lost their fathers they've become increasingly obese it's like 60 percent of black women are obese it's like 60 percent might even be more that could just be modest so lack of fathers obesity being constantly brainwashed into feeling like you're a victim class primarily from democrats so they can keep controlling them to vote that's why black people vote democrat even though typically i would think they're a little bit more conservative with their belief systems they left the church just like a lot of americans I think we're at the lowest point now in the States where people believe in God. It's the lowest number it's ever been. You add this all up. I, I forgot one. There's another one. It's called uh, the racism of low expectations. Basically, affirmative action says for, ever, for every how many white people in this college or this job or whatever, affirmative action says that you have to hire a black person. You have to get a black person in your school. But because they're put in the school based solely on their skin color and not the merit or not their own intelligence, we've set the bar lower for black people. Black people don't have the bar raised like other ethnicities have. And this is a, I would say, kind of a purely American phenomenon. I went to a large Christian university here and I had a lot of African friends. Not black American friends, but a lot of friends from Africa. And they detested this kind of black American culture. But we just keep feeding black people lies we keep saying that police are out to kill you. We say that innocent black men are dying every single day from cops. And it's a lie. It's not true. The latest evidence we have, latest data we have is from 2019, where less than 20 unarmed black men were killed. By police. 20. Less than 20. So we have around 40 million black people. 
in the U.S. 40 million and less than 20 in 2019 were killed by police. Unarmed black men killed by police. That is such a small sliver of the population. But we're telling this lie to people, and you can hear this through celebrities. Celebrities bring this up all the time. Newscasts, anchors. I'm black and I'm afraid for my life. I'm afraid that a cop's gonna kill me. For some reason, people of color have always been a target by the police. Before they became a policeman, they were a person. And that person took all their ideas and all their thoughts and all their prejudice into their job. Why, why would a police officer assume that you did something bad? Maybe because of my skin color. How do we fix black culture in the U.S.? I think it starts the same way that every other ethnicity has to fix themselves. I think it starts on an individual level, and I think it starts with individual responsibility, starting with an identity in Christ. Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. So step one is we have to start obeying God's commandments. We're not going to steal. We're not going to riot. We're not going to be violent. We're not going to have contempt. We're not going to be envious. We're not going to be immoral. We're not going to be drunkards. We're not going to be swindlers. We're not going to be people who are doing sexual acts before marriage. You know, hookup culture, abortion. Oh my goodness. There's more black babies aborted in New York than born. That's another thing. I didn't even mention that. You know, people talk about systematic racism. And they forget to mention Planned Parenthood, which was started by Margaret Sanger, who was a eugenicist. She hated black people, and she wanted black people and other minorities to be killed. She wanted an ethnic cleansing of black people. That's pretty systematic racism. You know, our tax dollars funded Planned Parenthood. By the grace of God, Roe v. Wade has been overturned. These people in all these videos, yes, they should take personal responsibility. These people doing these actions, that's their choice. Alt-right white nationalism... The KKK, white supremacy, did not make those people in that moment do those terrible things. To hurt that Mexican lady. To hurt these employees. They should take personal responsibility for that. But also, as a whole, what we should do is repent, believe in Christ, follow Christ because we love him, so we want to obey his commandments. And what we're going to do, and hopefully we can start pushing for this in a legal way, through a lot of prayer and hard work and educating ourselves, and actual educating ourselves, not this whole BS kind of like, oh, I'm white and I have to educate myself, listen to black voices. No, we're gonna decentivize abortion, decentivize divorce, and we're gonna start incentivizing families, fathers. Let's get rid of free healthcare. Let's get rid of healthcare. Government top down approach healthcare, get rid of it. Let's get rid of all the abortion clinics. Clinics. Let's get to a point where we think abortion it, is unheard of. We can't think about that. Let's incentivize marriages, keeping the father in the home, raising your children, caring about their education. Stop divorcing. Do all this. You know, focus on health too. You know, I said that black women are like, like 60% of them are overweight or obese. And someone's going to be mad and say, well, that's according to your BMI scale. No, just take a look around. I mean, stop hiding from the facts. Stop being scared that someone's going to call you a racist. We're not going to fix our problems unless we actually <laughs> talk about the problems. L look around at black people. Do you think they look generally, very, very generally, do you think they look fit and healthy? Black women. No. We, there is a stereotype that is portrayed constantly in media of, like, the sassy black woman who's angry. Where do you think stereotypes come from? Generally, they come from truths, and we can change that. We can get rid of our anger and frustration and negative thoughts and feelings. We can get rid of our unhealthiness. Our, we can fix our physical fitness. We can turn that stereotype around through Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ says, Come to me, all those who are heavy laden and weary. I will give you rest. It doesn't have to be this way. And I know I'm not the only one talking about this. A lot of people are talking about this. I feel the need to talk about this because, one, I'm seeing it. Two, I actually love these people, and I want to see them happy and healthy and redeemed through Jesus Christ. I want to see more black babies born. You know, the racists win if we have more abortion clinics, because I'm pretty sure black women have like 50% of the abortions, despite taking up 13% of the population. Black women, well, black people take up 13% of the population, so black women take up, what, 7% of the nation, and they're having 50% of the abortions? That's insane. That is ethnic cleansing. So I care about it. You know, and my skin color shouldn't matter. I think that's what we got to start doing is praying for these people. I think we should start, you know, lawless people. Doesn't matter your skin color. Doesn't matter your background. If you're 
breaking the law, you got to pay the punishment. There's consequences for that. Is that crazy to think of? You know, and maybe if people see consequences being out there actually happening, they're less likely to want to do that. If these three women who twerked and then destroyed this French fry place went to prison for life or something, like something completely bogus, you think people are going to keep doing this? If this was actually prosecuted, this is unacceptable behavior. Doesn't matter the skin color. And I know there's a lot of black people who think like this too, but they get called Coon and Uncle Tom. Just look at Candace Owens, Clarence Thomas, look at what they get called. And you better believe they love black people. Truth hurts. And that's all I have to say about that.